Howdy, partner. Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Sheriff Roysom. I'm looking for rollers and I'm gonna bring them in, dead or alive. Aside from cantilevering, which we will discuss in the next video, your main choices for roller support include the dead or live shaft designs. The dead shaft, as its name implies, is fixed to the framework. The roller shell rotates upon the shaft. One reason to choose this design option is that for a given shell geometry, there will be less deflection of the shell. The distance from the bearing support to the end of the shell is quite important. Ideally, this support would be inboard about one quarter of the shell's width and a few rollers are designed thus. However, even having the bearing support at the ends results in much less deflection and placing the bearings outboard. Another reason you might choose a dead shaft design is that the components such as shaft and shells are often stock rod and tubing with minimal machining and thus can be less expensive. Hopefully, less expensive does not mean standards have been compromised. One unique concern is that if the shaft gets too slender, it may whip and actually strike the inside of the shaft. Also, there are some unusual designs of dead shaft roller for specialty applications that are extremely expensive. These are where the shell is intentionally distorted by hydraulic shoes that push against a massive central mandrel. These are known as control crown rolls or shoe presses, though the results are more accurately termed multi-point deflection control. Designs such as these cost tens of millions of dollars and are used almost exclusively in paper and metal forming. In contrast, the live shaft roller employs heads and journals to span the bearing to shell. These designs cannot be made cheap. They are used for the most processed rollers and high precision idler rollers. In either case, you can judge the skill of your designer at a glance. The stick out of the dead shaft is minimal to reduce vibration, even if it does not affect deflection. More importantly is the live shaft design where the head to bearing distance should be just enough to clear as anything beyond severely compromises deflection. The bottom line is this. Unless you are a roller builder, do not worry your pretty little head about this choice. Instead, focus on making sure the builder conforms to reasonable roller specifications for your specific application needs. These important specifications include alignment, deflection, geometrical precision, and other concerns that are detailed in the must-have mechanics of roller buck and other places. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. Please stay tuned for the next video where we discuss cantilever.